Hello everyone, you've tuned into Business Today TV and I'm Akanksha. Today on our show, we are joined by a veteran of the Indian IT sector. He is Vineet Nair, the former CEO of HCL Technologies and the founder of Sampag Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So you're the author of a best-selling book, Employee First, Customer Second. But lately, it seems like employees are not ranking high on the priority list of IT companies. The salaries of freshers and other lower band of employees have witnessed only a 45% bump, while the salaries of top bosses have shot up to 1,500% in the past decade. And this is as per a Business Today analysis. According to you, what is causing this disconnect and how should Indian IT companies work towards bridging this gap? I think this is an unfortunate uh, appreciation and understanding the role of employees play in an organization growth. Uh, I truly believe that uh, all great organizations are built on the shoulders of passionate, purpose-led, focused, aligned, collaborative, innovative employees. And that takes a unique culture, which I call employee first, customer second culture, because predominantly the business of any organization is to create unique experiences for customers. And the way to create unique experiences or unique value for your customers is through the employees. And if the employees are not motivated, aligned, collaborative, and feel passionate about the purpose of the organization, you would not be able to create unique value or unique experiences for the customers. And therefore, whenever we hear about getting rid of employees, sacking employees, or treating them on use and throw or use and use and grow, uh, I feel disheartened of the fact that we have not understood the fundamentals of management and the fundamentals of management is that if you were to spend even part of your marketing budget in enthusing, encouraging, enabling your employees, you will get 10x higher results than you, you get in any other way. You must understand innovation happens on two axes. Innovation happens on what you do and innovation happens on how you do it. While CEOs are focused on new product, new pricing, new strategies, they should also focus on cultural transformation and how you execute those strategies. So when CEOs start focusing on the cultural transformation, on employee motivation, on employee alignment, you would suddenly see the strategies which you have, even if they are average strategies, would result into a significant amount of gains in market share, mind share, talent share, profit margins, and market cap. That was extremely insightful, sir. On the topic of employee satisfaction and loyalty towards company, I have another question. With the rapid rise in attrition rate, it is apparent that employee loyalties are dwindling. We have another buzzword popping up, moonlighting. You wrote an excellent piece about it and also shared a LinkedIn post calling out the hypocrisy of some industry leaders and posing the question, is senior management being a part of other company boards also moonlighting? How do you think the future of workspace can integrate moonlighting and how will it benefit the companies as well as the employees? See, when internet first came into the world, a lot of organizations resisted and said we will not allow internet to enter the desktops of our employees because a lot of information will leak away. But internet was an unstoppable event and therefore internet came to the desktop, came to the mobile phone, came to watches and came all over the place and the organization could not do anything. And that is the reason I call moonlighting an unstoppable event. It is going to happen. And it's going to happen because of multiple reasons. Reason number one is what you said, that the employees are completely disengaged. If you go by Gallup survey, the amount of demotivation or disengagement with the organization purpose, its ethos, and it's the way the employees are being dealt with is at its lowest. And therefore, the employees are searching for meaning in life, meaning in work, meaning and respect for their own capability and competence, which they have worked very hard for 25 years to get to that position. They are seeking that validation outside the work environment when they should be seeking that validation inside the work environment. That's number one. Number two, the first question you asked, the employee salaries are really, you know, especially in the IT services are very low. And they are low because of pyramid structures and IT services organizations spend a lot of time and money in training the employees. But that's fine. But at the same time, if the salaries are so low, they are 30,000, 35,000 for a fresher, then that fresher has to make two ends meet. He has to take care of his old parents. He has to take care of his brothers and sisters and whatever it is that you know he and she has a lot of responsibilities and those responsibilities will only be met 
in case that person finds an alternate learning. So that is how moonlighting really comes in. And the third is there is a humongous emphasis in India today on startups. And most of the organizations, CEOs uh, who are talking about moonlighting should remember that a lot of startups have came, come out of moonlighting, right? They, a lot of these companies were moonlighting while they were working in their respective organizations and they started thinking of these beautiful ideas and that moonlighting resulted into a lot of these companies coming, coming together. And therefore, all these startup companies are doing exactly the same. They are thinking of new ideas. They're building products over 12, 18 months, working the nights, working Saturday, Sunday, and building those products. It's a natural way of thinking. Now, the way to think about this is for organizations to make a distinction between what we call conflict of interest and moonlighting. Conflict of interest is a non-negotiable non instrument. You have to protect conflict of interest and you have to protect the organization. Moonlighting is a behavior. So, for example, when you control the flow of water in a river, you construct a dam. But you construct a dam not to stop the water, but to control the flow. So, therefore, you should control, you should have control over what the employee does outside office by building a dam and ensuring there is no conflict of interest, but allow that activity to happen predominantly because that way you would be able to protect yourself on conflict of issues and you will allow the water to flow. Therefore, the, there will be no flooding on the plains. I think organizations are not understanding it. And the last point is that you must understand if you allow employees, and it will be only 0.1 or 0.2% of the employees will get an opportunity moonlighting. If you allow them by controlling the conflict of interest issues, you suddenly would be seen as a company which cares for employees, as an employee first organization, and you would be, you know, there will be a humongous amount of motivation which will come into the organization, and you will gain a lot more than, than behaving like this, hum to jailer hai, like, you know, the famous dialogue in Shole. Uh, you know, it, it just, we have to think very carefully of what we are doing how the evolution of management thinking, how the evolution of employees thinking is, what kind of organization they want to work with, how they want to work it, and how are you going to get the maximum out of your employees. That's an extremely interesting take, sir, moving on. As a reporter, I have been closely tracking the delay in onboarding of freshers across various IT companies. There are thousands of recent graduates who have a job offer from an IT company, be it TCS, Infosys, Wipro, HCL. Capgemini, Accenture, but they have not been given a joining date from the past 12 months. Has this happened before? And what do you think is the reason behind this delay? No, it is, it is not a bigger systematic problem. What really happens is that it takes about uh, six to nine months to build an employee so that the employee can be deployed on a project. And you make a job offer in the campus a year uh, in advance of the employee joining. So you're talking about predicting what the demand of that talent will be 18 months in advance and at times you get it wrong. All right, sir, fair enough. That was all the time we had on this show. This is where we wrap the interview here. Thank you so much for taking out the time and joining us today. It was a wonderful conversation. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.